A Canadian Indigenous group says it found the unmarked graves of more than 700 people at a Catholic residential school in Saskatchewan this week. Many of the remains are believed to be those of children. Canada's residential schools dated back to the early 19th century, starting in 1831 when the government stole nearly 150,000 Indigenous children from their families and housed them in the schools. The country continued housing Indigenous children until 1996. Survivors have said that they experienced sexual, physical and psychological abuse during their time at these schools. Joining us to talk more about this is author David Troyer. He's a member of the Leech Lake Ojibwe tribe and he wrote the book The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native America from 1890 to the Present. David, thank you for being here. This is a, a difficult subject, obviously, but I'm hoping you can tell us more about how these discoveries are shedding light on the treatment of Indigenous people across North America. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me um, here to talk about an issue which is incredibly painful and uh, very difficult for a lot of people who don't know the history to, to properly understand. And as an indigenous person, how have you reacted to news of these mass graves and to the attention that it's garnered, as, as you say, as other people are starting to become aware of, of this, this dark history? I mean, it's, it's um, as a father, as a native person, um, the fact that across Canada, they're finding the graves of native children who were forcibly removed from their homes oftentimes or coerced out of them and uh, raised in, essentially by religious orders and by the state and deprived of their community and their family, um, they met with uh, early death. And it's very painful to, to consider. Um, but, um, you know, and, and in my family, you know, the legacy of boarding schools is, is alive. Uh, my grandmother, who is still alive, was sent to Toma Indian Boarding School in Toma, Wisconsin. Um, she was taken from her mother when she was about six years old and not allowed to return till she was 10 or 12. Um, and so like, you know, outsiders may, may admit that, you know, there were wrongs of the past, but they persist in thinking that these things are only relevant in the past, but the effects of boarding schools are with us today. The, the fact that my grandmother wasn't mothered by her own mother affected how she raised my mom, which in turn affected how my mom raised me. Um, there are long-standing sort of pernicious effects of these schools, both in Canada and the United States. Well, uh, David, you know, I think you're making uh, a really compelling point about the, the legacy of, of this wanton disregard, this abuse, this attempt to erase a, a cultural legacy. Um, and I imagine that there are people who are hearing us talk about this who are who are amazed not only that, you know, when they see when they see those black and white images and they hear about this, it does feel like something in the past, but that this this stretched until 1996 and still neither the Catholic Church nor the Canadian government uh, in this specific case is accepting responsibility for what happened to these children. Uh, how does that make you feel and what kind of message do you think that sends? Um, well, it sends the same old message that these governments have been sending indigenous people for the last few hundred years, which is that, you know, um, we are an impediment to uh, the quote unquote progress of so-called civilized nations. Um, how does it make me feel? Um, you know, my feelings are, are kind of secondary. I would like to see um, both formal apologies and um, processes in both Canada and the United States not only to address the wrongs of the past, but to um, to uh, help Indigenous people in the present and the future. Because the fact is, I mean, these boarding schools were set up not because there was any necessarily any antipathy, racial or cultural antipathy toward Native people. These were part of a colonial process. Um, these schools were set up to destroy Native nations by destroying Native families in the same manner that sort of our land was taken from us as a way to destroy tribes, not out of hatred, but out of a desire to um, 
take our resources and our land. And so, you know, it's it's really important, though, for people to, to think about sort of the ways in which education was something that was done to Native people. It wasn't something that was done for us, for our benefit. And so there's could be uh, learned from addressing these things in the past, from formal apologies from the church and from respective governments. And there are policies that should be put in place to not just address the wrongs of the past, but to uh, empower and protect Native people moving David, I, under, I understand uh, and appreciate uh, you saying that your personal feelings are, in fact, secondary to this. But uh, I think it is helpful for people who haven't had much exposure to these issues to have you as our, our touchstone uh, as, as we're trying to um, learn more about the depths of, of this problem, both historic and, and as it exists now. And so, to that end, uh, I appreciate you talking to us about this, and I'm I'm wondering what you think needs to happen to make amends with indigenous communities. You you offered uh, some thoughts about apologies, um, and the Canadian government has spent more than three billion dollars on reparations for survivors of these types of residential homes. Do you feel like that's enough, or what more do you think needs to be done? Oh, that's uh, that's not nearly enough. Um, reparations, you know, and, and the truth and reconciliation process in Canada um, was a good start. You know, it spoke to the needs of survivors of the residential boarding school system, but it didn't speak to the needs of uh, Indigenous populations in general. Um, it doesn't fix the problem, which is that we lack access to education. We lack access to capital and credit and um, as largely disenfranchised people, there are structural problems today. So beyond reconciliation, beyond apologies, beyond uh, reparations, I think all school, including all private boarding schools, like the very fancy ones in the States, like Andover and Choate and Deerfield Academy, um, as well as all public universities and private universities should be completely free for native people to attend. That would be a structural change that would address the wrongs of the past and it would protect us moving into the future. That's one thing that could happen. You know, no native right. person should to pay for any kind of education, public or private in Canada or the United States. That would be one small policy change that would uh, have profound effects. And a choice then of the education not being done to Native peoples, but by their own volition. David Troyer, thank you. Thanks for having me.